<laughs> Take one. In this episode, we're going to interrogate the newest member of the reseller locker room. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Time once again to talk things reselling and joining me in this episode as always. Up above, please welcome Alex the Beard King Icker. And to my right or your left, depending upon your screen orientation, Shane Soda City Flips with his frozen drink. And gentlemen, introduce our newest member to the locker room. Guys, your friend and ours, the one and only Chris Easy Pickens in the What's house. up, dude? What's yeah, up? What's up, Chris? Yeah, buddy. You can't Welcome. get rid of me now. Welcome. Dude, Officially. Welcome in. Yeah, thanks, guys. They did the same thing to you that they did to me. They brought me on for an episode, and then immediately after, they're like, hey, man, we flowed well. We messed well. Are you interested? Of course I was. And uh, same thing with you, brother. We had a blast yep. last week, man. It was such a good time last week. I had a lot of fun. It was a great time. Absolutely. Welcome in, Chris. It's great to have you a part of it. And in today's video, kids, we are going to interrogate Chris, a.k.a. Easy Pickens. So, gentlemen, right. fire away with your questions. So, Chris, where were you July 27th of 1977. 1977? I was about two years old. I was going to say, you've got to be about two, right? <laughs> I was about two. I was born in 1975, so. Okay. Yeah, I, I was in Topeka, Kansas, probably in a in a trailer at that point. Topeka. So you, Topeka, Kansas. That's where you were born and raised? Yep. Yeah, I lived there 30 years. I moved Man, to Southern California cool. in 06. Well, the end of 05, first part of 06. And never look back. I've been to Topeka back in like 2010, 11-ish, maybe. Chris. Yeah, it, it, it was a great it's a great city. You know, I don't want to talk talk anything bad about that city, but uh, I, I love living out here. I'll say that. Yeah. Why in the world did you choose reselling as a business? Well, I kind of always been in my blood, you know, like I'm always selling stuff that I find. You know, like I'm the type of guy, like I'm driving down the road and I see something on the side of the road that's worth money, man. I'll pull over, throw it in the car, take it home and like, okay, let's put it on Craigslist or put it on Marketplace or something like that, you know. Um, but really, when I started reselling like constantly late, you know, was it during the middle of the pandemic and I was going through, I was taking my daughter for walks during the day. You know, she she wasn't in school. She was home. And uh, I was taking her for walks during the day in the out al- through the neighborhood, like down the alleys. And um, I kept finding stuff by the trash cans, man. Uh, this one day I found a whole bag of Legos and uh, or Lego technically. And, you know, I thought it'd be for the kids, whatever. Brought it home, started looking at it, man. And there was like the Star Wars stuff. There was an old Viking ship. Uh, long story short, I sold all those Lego on eBay for like $400 or something crazy, man. And it really opened my eyes to it. Nice. nice. Now that shelf behind you. Yeah. So you, check you out those Star that, Wars. Yeah. Do you keep that shelf so neat because you know it's going to be on camera or you normally just keep trash around? Uh, no, that I might I staged the Star Wars stuff up here. I just listed that stuff like last week. So it's staged. So you, don't stage keep that, inventory. But... you don't keep inventory that neat. You just done it because you knew you were going to be on camera. Uh, well, it, right? actually, I like having like all this cool stuff like these die casts up here. Hey, I love having them on display, man. So, like, you know, you see my rack, it's on wheels. So, I wheel that that with the other three racks. And all three of those racks, you know, I mean, I got the totes all over them. But then, like, my die casts and my models and all that stuff, I always have them on display, man. I just love looking at that stuff. It makes me happy. (laughs) Which, by the way, gentlemen, we need to tell our audience if they didn't read our comments. You know, we showed a video from Trailer Trash Flips last week. And, uh, you know, how we've all bugged him to death about that trash heap that was heaped up behind 
<laughs> he said in his comments that he has finally organized all that so everybody can rest easy that he ain't going to suffer a concussion with stuff falling down on him. It is no a longer a hazardous helmet. situation. Yeah. So you, you started- were going to buy him a helmet? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, send him like a yellow helmet or something <laughs> while he's on his computer. Hard hat. Construction zone, man. <laughs> well, Chris, so you, start, I got... you started reselling. Well, you mentioned Craigslist, so you've been doing it a while. I mean, if you're bringing up Craigslist. Right, yeah. I mean, actually, I sold stuff on eBay, you know. Um, I think I mentioned on uh, Ben's Live, you know, I, I work on my own cars. I've always had, like, classic cars and stuff ever since I was a teenager. And, uh, you know, a few times I've bought a new carburetor on eBay you know, install it and then pull the old one off and then sell that one on eBay. You know, I mean, I've, I've sold car parts on eBay a lot, quite a bit, but I just had never until like, you know, about two years ago, I never thought of it as like a steady source of income. I just, it, it just didn't never clicked in my brain, you know? And I was always telling the wife, you know, over the last few years, you know, like, man, we need to do like everybody else does a buy, buy low and sell high, you know, and make some money, man. Like all these, everybody in the United States is doing it. It seems like, except us, you know? So, <laughs> my mentality <laughs> yeah hey that's a good mentality man I, I have one question for you um i'm sure all the other reselling gangsters out there like me want to know you spell easy with a z are you an easy e fan oh hell yes okay. yeah i grew that's up listening the to hip hop and man. gangster rap man I, I was 16 man i had like 15 inch subs in my car you know to 150 watt <laughs> Precision power amplifier, man. Rock from Fosgate, all that stuff, man. I'm all yeah, into yeah, it. Man. NWA, Easy E, you know, all that stuff. You see my my videos I drop on uh, Instagram. I, I love it because I could my little uh, screenshots and stuff because I could choose music, you know, on on Instagram. Yeah. Like, all right, this is awesome, you know. So like, I just dropped a the the you know the uh, the post for my latest video on Instagram. I got two short playing, so you know, mm-hmm. nice. I had two short in one of mine not too long ago. <laughs> So, so yes, definitely a fan. And that, that a, was an inspiration feeling, on the name. Yeah. I had a feeling, but yeah, I like that. That's cool, man. So you, you said kind of eBay talk- was a, a steady source of income. It's a, it's a source of income, but steady is questionable at times. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Very yeah. good point, Ben. <laughs> yeah. So are you still sourcing the alleyways? Yeah, dude. Actually, Dude, today I'm not even BSing you. Today I found these two bobbleheads, and they were stadium giveaways at the Kings, and they're uh, okay. D- Day of the Dead giveaway. There's oh, two wow. of them in the box at the trash can, dude. I got to show. Hold on. Uh-oh. I always, I always find he's stuff excited at the about can. these. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's coming up out of that chair like he's on fire. Oh wow! They're, 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 they're big. Of, they're like, much stuff over, but yeah. Okay, so there's two of them new in the box. I called him and I couldn't believe it. Like Holy cow! Like Two seventy-five and one seventy-five. Why, why, why does everything you get like two, three hundred dollars? Like that's what yeah. I want to know. I'm getting sick of this. <laughs> I'm not now trying that, to listen, guys, off, man. <laughs> now that now that he's on the show, none of us are going to win the sell of the week. No, nope. ever again. It's over. <laughs> that's true. It's done. He's hanging up, fellas. You guys you, got me a few times in the past. We oh, I just had it. six sale for nine hundred dollars. It was an okay day, sucker. <laughs> yeah, I did twenty one. I did twenty one over the weekend. He did four sales, and it was more than my twenty one sales. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, it wasn't until I woke up to that sale of the week overnight, man. That that night we were, we were all talking on Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Woke up Monday morning, Sunday night, man. I had a huge sale. I'll, I'll share that with him in a little bit. But. I mean, it's hard right. to tell because I know I had twenty one dollars wrapped up in my my twenty one sales. So. So what are your long-term goals, Chris? Uh, work-wise, I, w- I want to become a full-time reseller. Um, yeah. You know, I still got a little ways to go before I'm ready to, to pull pull the plug on a, on a full-timer, you know. But, um, but man, I want to. You know, I really do enjoy reselling. And my job, I, I'm on my 10th year of my job, and I just really haven't been enjoying it lately as much as I should, you know. And it really takes a toll on the mind when you're doing – you know, you're just putting your head down, going to work, doing your thing every day, every day, every day. I mean, it, yeah, it really does it's make a call on me anyway, you know? and, to... and then especially knowing that this is here and I, I really get a kick out of it, man. I mean, I, the reason I started doing YouTube was because I know my friends and family were tired of hearing my, oh, I sold this. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at this. You know, 
Yeah, oh, we're tired yeah, here. I gotta have an outlet. I get so passionate about it. I, I, I gotta have an outlet. So that's that's why I do my channel. You know, I don't really, I don't. You know, if I get monetized, that's awesome. If I start making yeah. money out, that's awesome. But that's not why I started doing it. Yeah, that's funny. That's <laughs> true. I, I, my family could care less about you know what I sold or or found. You know. Well, my parents are obsessed with it too. They, I talk to them. Well, I see them every day practically with my dad being in poor health, but. You know, did you sell anything? What'd you sell today? How many did you have? How much profit did you make? It's every day, every day. So, That's you know, cool. they, my, they my, mom keep me does not, my mom does not understand it. She's like, how do you do that? I don't get it. Like, she just can't wrap her. It's her a digital yard it. sale. Okay. Yeah. It, we just do it digitally. It's hard for a lot of people to wrap their heads around reselling. Like, seriously. Yeah. They just don't understand. It doesn't make sense well, to them. Walmart's a reseller. Yeah, those yeah. loads is a reseller. Absolutely. Well, you know, my Grocery mom. Stores. My mom, she, you know, I, she knows I want to go full time, and then she's like, well, "Well, what's your backup plan?" I'm like, "Backup plan? What are you talking about? No, 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 no! I'm going full time, like, like for real, mom. There ain't no other plan. I mean, I guess if I fail miserably, I'll go get another job. But you know, no, there's, no, there's, failure's there's not, not in jobs. my uh, not in my wheelhouse right here. You know. Yep. So let's right, talk about. Question. Let's talk about this sourcing and how you keep, if you guys haven't checked, first of all, if you haven't checked out Chris's channel, make sure after this episode, you go over there and hit that subscribe button and then jump to my channel and give me a subscribe. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but watch yep. his what sold videos and you'll be blown away. Every time I watch them, I'm yelling at the screen. Like, where do you find all this stuff? Like, <laughs> I'm happy. I found a $10 item. He's fine. $10,000 items. <laughs> not well, not you know 10,000, but. I mean, he's holding Hot Wheels for nine hundred dollars, one single car. Like, what I bet if he moves back to Topeka, Kansas, he wouldn't be scoring all that stuff. Yeah, no, yeah so I, don't, let's, I don't know. I never tried to source there. You know, I mean, like, I'm kicking myself for living here for what fourteen years, sixteen years before I even started doing this. You know, I'm like, man, why, why was I blind to this? You know, I mean, I, I still let's kicking talk myself about the the sourcing where you're finding all these things, and and what is your favorite place or your favorite places to source? So yeah, I got a thrift store. Um, big name thrift store right down the street man salvation army and you know most of the time let's see wednesday through through friday i go twice a day now i know their stockers don't work on you know on sunday night or monday night so i don't go monday tuesday but wednesday thursday friday i go twice a day and that's crazy that, man i mean Our... you saw those you saw what i picked up today it was yeah. unbelievable our, I, wasn't gonna go, man. I was just i just went to the post office went to the ups went to fedex i'd hit all three today and on the way back, I'm like, eh, okay, I'll pull in, and yeah. then shoot, man, it was definitely worth it. But yeah, so that's, that's one avenue, enormous. and then uh. then garage. Well, see, here's the thing, man. I was talking about it in Ben's show when I was on his live. I live at the base of this hill called Palisades, dude, and big money, man. I mean, it's big money. All these houses up here, big money. I live right at the base of it. Okay, I'm not, I'm not in the big money part okay <laughs> i'm right at the base of it but guess what's right next to me is a, is a salvation army also that you know yeah i don't want to give away too much information but i probably just did but you know hey what <laughs> hey if you know where it's at come come try man come try you know there's other pickers there i ain't the only one they're you know? all donating over there so the yard sales in those neighborhoods like epic the, then too yeah so like you know when the yard sales are, are published i start up there man if i can mm -hmm. depending on what time they start you know i try to start up there if I have a choice of going up there or inland a little bit, I go up there for sure. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, you guys see the all the stuff I get from the swap meet, man. Uh, I came up on an awesome hookup out at the Long Beach swap meet. And, man, it's it's unbelievable the stuff that he has. The same dude. I get all this diecast stuff from the same dude, man, for the most part. I mean, there are some exceptions, but like that $500 or that Hot Wheel that I sold for 900 bucks that I paid 500 bucks for, I bought that from him. <laughs> So have you built that was the second time I offered him 500 the first time I didn't think he was he didn't take it the first time so I didn't think he was gonna take it the second time I was just kind of messing around he was like yeah I'll take it are you really are you sure I was like shoot you kidding me <laughs> have you built a relationship with him where he's holding stuff for you yeah totally yeah he's okay. he's came and done a he's brought a private pick to my house before dude like that's how that's how much he's into it oh, and then wow. I've gone to his storage unit before and then he's always in the same spot out at, out at the swap meet, you know? And then he'll be like, oh, I got some stuff for you. He sees me coming, man. All he sees is dollar signs with me coming, you know? <laughs> all you see and is dollar signs. When I see, when I see him, him, I see dollar signs when I see him, yeah. too. You know, so it works out for both of us, really. Yeah. 
that yeah that's but i do pay up man i mean you see, I'm, i try to be transparent man you know like when i do my what solds um my custom skew right there says how much i paid man and i mean that's for real dude that's what i put in when i list the item if i don't put it right there or write it down i'll forget it man like it's hard for me to remember what happened two days ago you know i can remember stuff from when i was a kid and 10 years ago 20 years ago but last week shoot it's hard to remember a lot of stuff <laughs> yep yep i feel you there i was watching uh Lux Garage, man. Today he was he was unboxing this Nintendo set with the with the robot and all that stuff, man. I was like, oh man, I had every I remember everything that he's pulling out of that box, you know. But I can't remember what my wife said yesterday, you know. <laughs> so let, let's rewind a little bit here. Speaking of your childhood, were, were your parents into thrifting or taking you to yard sales? Did you grow up around it at all? You know, uh, my grandma, she loved going to the thrift store, man. She was very resource, a very resourceful woman. Um, she she usually didn't have a whole lot of money, but she always had the cool stuff, man. And I remember she used to buy us stuff, but she she'd get it from the thrift store. But that was that was really where I was introduced to that. But then mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I really didn't even revisit it till a few years ago, honestly. That's but yeah, when weird. I was a kid, I, I would go to garage sale with her. That's that's the that's it. You know, the only other experience I have with garage sales was like my mom would try to hold a garage sale, and then we'd have to do most of the work. Yeah. <laughs> That's not as fun that way, running the right. garage, though. I, I do not enjoy that. I don't mind it, man. It's, well, it's a lot of work, but, man, same thing out here. I, I got, you know, I got resellers showing up in my front yard to buy all the stuff I got out there whenever I'm liquidating all my stuff that didn't make the eBay cut, you know? Start calling him Kingpin. Kingpin? Kingpin. It's, it's funny you say that. Oh, <laughs> oh I forgot get... to bring out my bowling shirt to show you guys. Oh, yeah. I got mine too. We didn't see yours. <laughs> Did you Everyone, see mine again? Everyone's gonna have bowling shirts. I haven't okay. seen yours. Cool. Let's wear our bowling shirts on. By the way, Shane, if you want to announce what's happening next Friday, we can wear our bowling shirts for that. All right. Oh, all right, sure. Uh guys, next Friday, 6 p.m. <laughs> Eastern Standard Time. The locker room's going live. Oh, One yeah. more time, we will not have a regular scheduled episode because we are going live, but we love spending time with you guys and answering all your questions in the chat. So we look forward to seeing you there. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's been like we're almost a, a, a month. So well, we're, yeah, it has we're been a little while. Too. It'll Mine's be my first sweet. I, 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 sent, I sent photos of it uh, <clears throat> in the chat, Ben, just I'll go if back you want to look, look I'll back. I'll go back and look. Yeah. Dude, that's pretty much great. Yeah, Next question. Cool. You got a question, Shane. He's got nothing. I'm He's I'm thinking. actually curious about the hat on the I, I think that's a wall behind you, but or a shelf way back there. It looks like yep. Curious George. What's the name? Uh the dude who, who runs around with Curious George. Oh, the uh, yellow hat? Yeah. The man with <laughs> that's the what yellow it reminds hat. Me of. Yeah, there you go. That's uh, what it reminds that, me actually, of. Actually, that hat is a straw hat. I, I bought that uh, when I went uh, deep sea fishing in Cabo one year. Nice. And, uh, he yeah. wears it when he mows his yard. Yeah, it looks oh, like yeah. a lawnmower. I haven't have mowed a yard since I left Kansas, brother. Really? No, nobody out here mows their own yards, man. The gardeners take care of all that. What do you have? Just rock? No, we have gardeners. but I, Dang, hey, listen, listen, I, I, listen I, I'll be straight with you guys. I rent this place. I don't pay for the gardener. The owner pays oh. for the gardener, so I'm like, yes, there please. Wow. I, I yeah. rent too, and I got got to cut my own damn grass. It's my, it's my job to make sure. The <laughs> yeah. so I, had to, I had to do in our last rental was I had to buy a lawnmower and mow the lawn, and now yeah, here I don't I don't have to do it anymore. But I have a lawnmower in the corner here. Got to blow a lot of leaves and pine needles and all that garbage like me. Yep, I'm breathing all that pollen over here. Yeah. When I own my house in Kansas, man, yeah. I, one of my least favorite things to do, man, mow the front backyard. I just, I just didn't water it, so I didn't have to mow it as much, you know. You just didn't water. It. <laughs> well, here in Tennessee, it doesn't matter. It'll, it'll grow back the next day after you, you mow it. Yeah, I got to cut mine now. I don't, I don't mind mowing the lawn, but I need to do it soon. Chris, what is the one thing you hate most about reselling? <clears throat> uh, sometimes <laughs> the customers. <laughs> sometimes the customers. Uh, the returns. You know, um, and then the way eBay works with you on the return sometimes is just very frustrating. It's yeah, my and least I'd, favorite I'd, I'd have to say them. honest returns aren't too bad. Like I, I have a return yeah. supposedly coming back. Uh I sold a 
pretty dope Captain America hat. Not much, 13 bucks, I think, plus shipping. And uh, got a return request, doesn't fit. It's a snapback. So uh, my only guess is they That's bought it for it. their kid. Oh. So it doesn't fit. But anyways, uh, said it doesn't fit. <clears throat> They're paying to ship it back and all that. You know, I don't mind that. That's an honest, legit, hey, this didn't fit. I need to send it back and get a refund if that's cool. Obviously, eBay just accepts that anyways. But, yeah, it's it's the BS returns yeah. that I can't stand. Yeah, I had one example of what I'm talking about. So I sent, I bought, I sold this, like, hiking backpack, okay? It's like the metal frame, canvas cover on it, whatever. And it was pretty high, and it sold for, like, 90 bucks or something. Okay, I got it for free, dude. I mean, like, it was on the side of the road, and I picked it up. It's one of those things where I picked it up, threw it in the car, and I sold it for 90 bucks. Just but, laying around, dude. Just pick it up. Just dude, it was sitting there. there. It's Al Alpina. I don't know if you ever heard of Alpina, but it was a little real high-end brand, you know? And it was made right, right here in Ventura, you know? So I was like, heck yeah, shoot. Sure. You kidding Only me? Only thing laying on the side of the road around here is trash. I mean, physical, real trash. What? Dead well, squirrels and, and deers, dead squirrels yeah. and possums, <laughs> roadkill. Yeah, so I sold it, and uh, the dude was like, Oh, this is the this doesn't fit, it's the wrong size, you know, whatever. And I, and at that time, I was still running the free returns, all that crap. So I said, You know what, man, here's a full refund, just go donate it or something, right? Here's a full refund, go donate it. What's the guy do? He ships it back anyway. On my dime, eBay gave him a priority label to ship this huge thing back to me. And uh -huh. I ended up having to pay like, you know, what, another 40 bucks for shipping or 50 bucks for shipping. And I told him to keep it. And the dude's response was, well, I thought you meant donate it back to you. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Ooh. So it was a big <laughs> back and forth. Basically, eBay didn't have my back and I still had to pay for it. And I still got a ding Ooh. for it, dude. I got a, That's mm. one of my defects. I was really irritated about it, if you can't tell. <laughs> Well, speaking of defects, I thought it was super cool in your video today that you actually went through and talked about that kind of stuff. You know, uh, late shipments and returns and other things mm. that can ding your account. I thought that was cool of you to be transparent and show that because you you literally put it on screen. Like, here's my defect. Oh, yeah. I've, I've taken, I'll take you guys into my seller hub in, in quite a few episodes, man. I mean, like, I, I try to be transparent, you know, as possible. I'm not yeah. hiding anything. I mean, I'm straight up, hey. Out of $108,000 I made last year, I only got one third of that. You know, I mean, I'm not, you know, if I was going to BS about it, I'd, I'd sure make that number a lot bigger than that, you know? Yeah. But, uh, no, I, but I yeah. just thought that was, that was cool. Not, not too many people go in and, and show, they'll talk about some of the negative things, but they don't go and literally show you the negative yeah. things. I thought that was cool. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, and, and I was being truthful about that, man. Like um, around Christmas in January, when the post office was backed up a little bit or whatever, I kept going in there every day, man, and finding late shipments. And like, they're saying that I uploaded my tracking late, which is total nonsense. I mean, I'm, I never do that. Why would I do that? Man, I'm securing my money. Why would I ship it late? You know? So then yeah. out of like 16 that I appealed, 15 of them were granted. They, they sided with me, but one of them, they didn't. And it was because it was in, it was involved in a return. And since it was involved in the return, they couldn't turn over the, the decision. And I'm just like, man, See, and I didn't know you could appeal. I didn't, I didn't know you could appeal the late shipment stuff because I have three, right? Three well, out of seven hundred and twenty. Because I looked after watching your video, I was mm -hmm. like, I'm curious what mine is. So I have three late shipments out of seven hundred and twenty sales. However, what I don't know if that's ninety days or whatever oh. that shows, but uh, so mine's not too terrible, you know. But you know, it's a low percentage. But I was just curious, so I went and looked, and uh. Yeah, you mentioned uh, fighting back for that, and I didn't even know that was an option. Yeah, you can appeal every one of those defects. Uh, whether they've side with you or not is one thing, and the easiest yeah. way to find it is just Google appeal defect on eBay, and it'll take you right to it in, in Google. I mean, I, I'm not sure how, the path to get there. I get lost every time I go through that thing, man, in eBay <laughs> trying to find it. So I just yeah. I Googled it, and then I just I just bookmarked it. So now I just go to my bookmark, and I'm like, oh, appeal that one, appeal that one. Because, I mean, honestly – I don't hear anybody else talking about it, but if I wouldn't have intervened with that, I, I wouldn't be top rated, dude. I mean, straight up, I would be uh, below yeah. or below standard, or whatever the hell they say it is. Above above standard, I think is the one in between, isn't it? Whatever, yep. yeah. it's not it's not top rated, whatever it is. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Interesting. <clears throat> any other questions? I think we should save. If you guys have any questions, leave it down below in the comments, or wait 
until yeah. the live and we can ask some more questions in the chat if you guys have anything yeah still it's, comment it's, we want what a random yeah, yeah. nonsense whatever still comment but save your questions if you want for the live show or come hit yeah. me up on instagram too but still come right. to the live show. Come to the live show. You know, come to the live show. <laughs> Don't leave us there by ourselves. If you got a question you can't wait on, just hit me up, man. I'll answer it. We get scared when we're by ourselves, all right? So, so eBay, yeah. I see you have eBay Forgotten Collectibles. That's where that's your store on eBay? That's right. So people can find you there and then also Way to on, pimp that out, bro. on YouTube. Yeah, I'm going to start doing that. It's a good idea. <laughs> also, YouTube as Easy Pickens and Instagram Easy Pickens. That's right. Yep. And now Facebook, too. Thanks, guys. <laughs> oh yeah, you had to sign up for Facebook. <laughs> well, I actually already had the account. I was like, I got a couple of different accounts, and I was like, Ben was like, "Oh, check your messenger." And I'm like, "Man, did you guys send it to the wrong one?" And then it was like, it "Took you oh, a while to oh, figure that one out." <laughs> you had to figure that out. One. Speaking of other accounts, have you done any cross promoting? Are you using Macari or any other sites, or just eBay? No, uh, oh, eBay world, man. I have a few things on Marketplace, bigger stuff, and and Craigslist, but now, um, just trying to. You know, focus on eBay. You know, kind of live in an eBay world. I don't really want to have more moving parts, man. I mean, like I'm, I feel like I'm still new, new in here, man. You know, so it's like, I just if 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 I felt like I was really struggling with sales, I would definitely go look at Macari. And Did you just parts. accidentally say you still feel nude? New. Did that new. word come in nude? I thought y'all. I thought I heard you say it. I still feel nude. Well, sometimes, but no, I do. <laughs> hey, man, cover your junk, man. We don't want to see that. <laughs> We're in the locker room, man, but I ain't getting crazy. So come on. That's now. right. We don't go to the showers together. Forget that stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right. We got any more questions for this newest edition? No, we're gonna we're gonna save them for the viewers. So leave the comments down below. Leave them yeah. down below. The questions. I'm curious to know what everybody else has to, you know, ask that we completely missed. Yeah. Oh, there's and more we, to ask, but we'll, we'll leave it open for you guys. So, yeah, there you go. Find of the week, gentlemen. Find of the week. All right. Do you want, I got a story before the find of the week here. And this is the All story, right. the story of redemption. So a couple months ago, I don't know, maybe five months ago, I put out this yard selling video. And I saw this mug. I picked it up for a second, but I was like, eh. I set it down and I saw this other cool vintage tennis thermos and I bought that. And then this freaking guy comes and leaves these nasty comments on my video telling how I'm a terrible reseller and I just passed up 30 or $20 on this one item. So this is a story of redemption. This is for you, Ben, because this is what I found. <laughs> Yes, um, yes, I dude. I think this one's bigger. It's sixty-four ounces. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's a bigger one than the one it's that about I friggin' up. time, dude. Holy crap! <laughs> so this is That's funny. It's the find of the week. Is it going to be sold? Probably not. It's probably going to be my new podcast mug. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Though. Their sold comps are like twenty-four or thirty bucks on this, though. I missed the tea jug. A freaking half gallon, dude. <laughs> That's judged. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That's that's the find right there for Ben. <laughs> I take it that's what All you right. passed up on last time. <laughs> yes, I passed up that in the video. Yes, he did. All right. Who's got a find? Who wants to go? I got one. Uh okay. I was source sourcing on whatnot because you guys know I have not had time to actually get out and about. Uh, but I was sourcing on whatnot and I, I found quite a bit of stuff over the last week. But my favorite thing I found. A vintage 1990s Rage Against the Machine tour concert t-shirt with the raised fist and the Molotov cocktail on the back. Right on. Uh, it is a rare white version <laughs> of the shirt. Most wow. of them sold were black. So I paid 100 I paid up for it. I paid $100 for it, but it's like a $400 shirt. That's so, killer, dude. Sweet. That's that's sure. cool with me. So I I pulled a little easy pickings out and paid up for something for once. Who did you buy that off so, of? Hey man, uh, you faded, do it. faded show, F A D E D, faded show. They all vintage stuff, man. Mm -hmm. Hundred dollars. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Yeah, that's and I mean, this thing is out. pristine, bro. Pristine. 
Sweet man, white and pristine. That's amazing. Yeah, it's in it's a size large. It's, I wish it was a little bigger. XL would have been great, but still, I'll take it. Let me go big screen. I'll show you mine. This is a vintage, and you know it is because it says Winston, Winston Cup. Cup series. Is that Sterling Marlins or what? Who was driving that? It's a crew shirt, the Dew Crew, Dew. which goes along with Alex's mug. Heck yeah. But it's got all the embroidery patches on the sleeves. And uh, we'll see. Winston Cup. So that's 90s at least, right? Or at the latest. Yeah. I yeah, like those shark, shark tooth sleeves, man. Yeah. Isn't that cool? That is sweet, man. I like that it says Dodge. About $140. And uh, nice. I got it for 10 bucks. Heck yeah. Nice, man. Yeah. I nice. like it. You should save it, and then you should buy this mug, and you could drink the Mountain Dew in your Mountain Dew shirt, and then wear them, but wear it to the bowling. <laughs> wear it, to wear it bowling. Oh, you should be a bowling, bowling shirt. shirt. <laughs> you should see my bowling shirt, man. It's awesome. Yeah how how is that going with the the bowling signups for the Crossville meetup, the one twenty seven? Uh, Jason from Lux Garage messaged me last night. He is signed Wait. up. Cool. I, I think Miss, we've Miss, got Miss Mary, Mary signed up, right? Mary, Mary McQueen. Mary, Mary and her son are coming. I think we have uh six so far, but it's still early yet. Yeah, yeah. We still got months, but I'm looking yeah. forward to that, man. It's gonna be a sign blast. up, guys. If you want to go bowling, if you're gonna be at the 127 Thursday night, we're gonna be doing some bowling. We'll probably drop some more info on that when it gets a little bit closer with a flyer or something. Throw it on it's, Instagram. Yeah. It's important to note that you don't have to be good at bowling. I know that Jason nope. said, well, I'm not good at it at all. I said, well, I ain't bowled in 20 years, so it doesn't matter. You know, so it's just the point of getting together and just yeah. having fun. That's what it's just about. Just having a good time. Exactly. That'll be a good time, man, for sure. Yeah. All the Chris, bad bowlers need to go on Shane's because he's a professional bowler. So he needs all the ones that really suck at bowling. <laughs> no, so funny, I'm on your funny. team. <laughs> Funny story though. So I went bowling Saturday um, like on the way to my ready. on the way to my sister's. Well, I, I bought a ball. I decided I was like, you know what? If we're gonna go bowling, I'm gonna get back into it and have some fun. So I used to bowl four nights a week. I almost went pro before my son was born, and when he was born, born, I decided not to. Um, I haven't bowled since then, and it's been you know close to twenty years. So, anyways, I went out and bought a new ball shoes bag the whole whole nine yards but i went and bowled saturday and i bowled six games and there was this family next to me and my wife was with me she wasn't bowling but she was with me and these kids were watching me and i heard one of them say do you think he's a professional (laughs) and i was like dude if you could have seen me when i was 18 because i i averaged 180 out of six games, I had a 180 average. Back then, I was shooting a 280 average, like 300 is best you could get. But um, do you have 300 games? I never did. I shot on 297 once. Ah, that's my best game. Killed. We're gonna get killed, <laughs> no, dude. It's, it's, it's not all of us against not Shane. That, not I, that I mean, like, I have more. a ball and I have you know, I, I use fingertip ball, whatever, but I mean, you know. I mean, like, I think my high score, like 212 or something like that, man. So, you know, yeah. no, no, uh, no professional or anything. So that's is, for sure. Isn't there actually ball, Shane, for like different, if you have a spare or like a certain shot yeah. that you switch balls? Yeah. So I only bought one ball. I, I'll have two before I get there. Um, <laughs> but Jeez. I, I have. There ain't going to be bought, no competition, man. <laughs> Your every, balls hang every, low, boy. <laughs> Every every bowl like legit bowler has at least two balls. They have their main strike ball, and then they have a spare ball. Um, just have different grip, I, right? When I yep, in in a different um, a different performance rating. So high performance ball is going to give you the best hook. It's going to be the most expensive ball, and then it kind of goes all the way down to like a straight ball, one you just throw straight. So you're but, you're saying three balls is just too much. No, I had, I mean, I had it's overkill. Well, I that's time six, I needed a spare. That's for sure. I had six balls in the late nineties. <laughs> six <laughs> oh, balls. Lord. Lane now conditions only two, huh? Lane conditions. Lane conditions. How do they? How do they change? I don't have. 
I don't have any. This is getting point. way too how serious. Does, how, does, back to, back to how does the, how does the <laughs> length that's good about. change? How does the condition? Please don't be afraid of Shane's change. bowling skills. <laughs> Come out to the bowling. You don't have to be good. Yeah. The rest of us I are going to suck. So, I'm, you know, I'm, so. Alex, I'm, the, the I'm, lanes, I myself. In the 90s, the lanes went from wood to synthetic. When you throw oil on them, it depending on you know how often people are bowling on that specific lane the oil disappears or it moves because the ball's rolling through it it'll move out so okay. the conditions change so when i was bowling competitively i had six different bowling balls to to be able to stay competitive all night each ball each wow. ball performed differently in on in certain oil situations <laughs> i was good man i'm not i'm not great anymore but all right, I'll find it. Quick, here we go. You're Chris is fine. Chris is fine. All right, what so, a puzzle. Oh, the thrift store today. Find another day. Oh, I wasn't gonna go to the thrift store today, but I did, and this is one of the things I found. The vintage uh, Bratz doll. So I comped it. There was like, there's actually like four of them. Okay, like four of them all in a box. Dang. That one was 10. This one was 10. This one was 15. But this one was 15. And this is the money right here. So I comped this one and her soul cost for 250. Yeah, and he's not BS and he should. Oh, and I used a 25% is... off coupon on it too, so you know. That thing is stupid. It's so dumb that you find such good stuff and we don't. Yeah, it is. Makes me mad. <laughs> you're stealing. Apparently, you're stealing from the rich in Southern California. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're just giving it away. I'll just buy it. I just paid for it. That's all. That's amazing, dude. How you find that stuff? And it yeah. Right. That wasn't gonna be. That, I already had another find of the week that I was gonna show you guys. You want to see that one too? It's pretty. Well, yeah. Go ahead. Rub it in even more. more. Go on. We'll make this rub one the cool, the cool. The cool find of the week. Okay, hold on. I get another one just to. to yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that's oh, dope. dude. Hanging that's on the nice. wall at the thrift store, dude. Not even BSing you. That's Hold that up. I was on the phone with Woody actually when I found it. He comped it for me while I was in there because I couldn't get a signal. What was Woody doing? Drinking uh, coffee? At least two hundred. It costs at least two hundred. Oh, Can you imagine shipping that thing? So, has anyone seen the new Bob Marley movie yet? Uh, no, it's perfect timing, right? I did sell a yeah. Bob Marley T-shirt the other day. Yeah, I bet. And I had Damian Marley in my Instagram story. I know I was a, I was jamming, dude. I used to jam that. <laughs> I love. Uh, but no, with that, I'm gonna load, like I'm gonna Bob list Marley. it high for local pickup because I really don't want to sell it. You know, gotcha. it's gonna it's gonna find a place in the garage here, and I'm gonna list it at like 350 local pickup. All right, Chris. Well, next week you get no find of or no find of the what? week. Yeah, That's right. Come on, come on. The, the, people see it. the people want to see it, man. <laughs> You've been canceled already. No way, man. I'm, I'm, we're going to bring more people in that way, see? All right, sale of the week. Who's got one? We'll go first. Uh, mine was super simple. Taylor made putter. Um, Paid like $1.99 for. On my 30% off markdown sale, it sold this week for just under $34 plus shipping, but I made about $7 off the shipping as well. So that was yeah, it for me. Pulling Alex's shipping numbers. That's good. I'm not making $70 off my shipping like Alex, though. <laughs> I, I have I have something to show you guys. I don't know if I should even show it here on the show. You're talking yeah, about go well, ahead. No, dude. Making money uh, off shipping. And people are going to judge me for this. Someone do another sale. I'll find it real quick. All right, I'll do it. I had a New York Yankee jersey. I went and bought it at a vintage toy show. I've done a video on my channel about it. And it was a, it had a membership patch on it, which I had never seen a jersey with a, um, some kind of membership to something according to the Yankees organization. Anyway, 30 bucks plus shipping. I think I gave eight bucks for it. So nice. Sweet. Now tell us Chris. about your $72,000 item, Chris. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Friggin' Money right, Bag. Uh, not quite that much, but I showed you guys that golf bag last week. And um, I I mentioned it, I comped it at 500. Now, when I got into it, I started checking it out, cleaning it up. And when I tried to pull up this little magnetic door on the dang bag, it ripped off the tab. So it killed the value a little bit. I had it listed for 249 but it sold like in one day. 
probably not focusing. Yeah, I saw that in your video today, I'm man. Right. That's such a pretty bag, too. What did it sell yeah. for? I can't see it. It was blurry. Two fifty. Two, oh, sorry. Two two forty nine ninety nine. Well, it sold like in one day, man. It was pretty, pretty wild. Yeah, we're, is, going to elim- we're going to eliminate this segment since he's. This is like show. the worst position to be in. I have to go last, like go after Chris. This is not fair. So he has to. I go tried last, to go man. last. Well, you Anyways, said if right. somebody find a sale, you had to look something up. So, so my sale of the week was eleven Obeka homeschooling books or Christian homeschooling books. I sold them for seventy five dollars for eleven yep. books. But what I want to show you guys is. I made, well, let me just show you. So an item sold for 38. This is the whole total of 38. And you can see the shipping paid was $28. So let me scroll over to what I paid to ship it. <laughs> Highway robbery. Holy smolies. Like so I let me tell you this all the time, Chris. All the time he does this. No, I, this has never happened before. So this is a mistake on my part. But is it really my fault? Because they paid for it and they didn't say anything. The item was a nine ninety nine. It cost nine ten dollars for a little trolls doll. I had the box that it was going to fit in was six by six by six, but I accidentally put sixty six by six by six. They still paid for it. What do we? What do you do? I mean, they were willing to pay it, but at the same time, hmm, like, like, how do you sleep was... at night? How do you sleep at night, Alex? I don't know, Alex. When, uh, I, when I used to share my shipping discount... $28 richer. That's how I sleep at night. When, yeah. When I used to share my shipping discount, man, I, I never refunded anybody anything. I'm I telling you. I know, but that, you, was a, that was a mistake on my part. But well, you think they would have the, caught it when the item cost $38 and it was a $10 item? They wanted if, I had, bad. if I had that scenario, Alex, and I tried that, they would freaking leave me negative feedback for overcharging for shipping. I haven't got a, a negative. See, and that's what yet, they haven't reached though. out they, to me. Should I reach out to them agree. to say, "Hey, you, I messed up." You I know, because you when they leave feedback, they can star rate you on shipping, the description of the item. You know, they got categories. Mm-hmm. And I just, and I don't agree with that because I think, and and I, I hundred percent agree they can. I don't agree that they should be able to because they yeah. agreed to that price plus shipping. Yeah. I don't I but, don't feel like they should be able to uh give you any kind of rating on cost wise, only on, you know, how fast you shipped it out and what kind of condition they received the item in. I think right. price and shipping they shouldn't be allowed to rate you on because they agreed to it. I agree with that too. True yeah. that. True that, Shane. That's, you know, that's my opinion. Oh, Alex. My, my sell of the week was my shipping. <laughs> How do you shove that in your taxes? Most of your profits is coming from shipping charges. How do you explain that to your accountant? The <laughs> shipping cost is a liability. You should be, you know, that's an expense. No, it's not. It's a profit every time I sell something. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's, that's funny, man. All right. Now you know what's oh. next. Pitiful sale of the week, gentlemen. Pitiful sale. Chris only sold an item for a hundred dollars. I mean, what terrible! Oh, sale. come on! Yeah, that's well, horrible. This is still real man. life. Uh, okay, I'll start. Okay. My pathetic sale of the week, or pitiful sale of the week, is a Callaway Hawkeye driver. I paid six bucks, sold it for eleven. But catch this: I paid two dollars for the box, and it was promoted at eight percent. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I had a Hot Wheels die cast sold for four dollars eighty cents, ten eighty all in with shipping. I sold a Chicago Cubs Major League Baseball twelve inch hot dog plush hot dog. forever collectibles. <laughs> I'm assuming this was a something you buy at the games, uh at Wrigley, but uh Anyway, seven dollars on a best offer. Uh, I had it listed for ten. I took seven. I had fifty cent in it, so not a not a big loss there. But uh, buyer paid six, six fifteen to ship it, and it actually cost me four something. So I actually made a couple bucks back on shipping. There you so, go. That's the way to do it. Yeah, Good job. I'm. I learned from from you and Chris this week. <laughs> Pay up for stuff and overcharge for shipping. That's yeah. exactly right. 
<laughs> my my pathetic sale is a plushie as well. The Disney Princess Elsa sold for five dollars. Uh, they paid five ninety five to ship it, so I probably made at least a dollar, two dollars on shipping. But Ben, I did throw it in a poly bag for sure. Not in a box. I did. I did. I threw the hot dog in the poly bag as well. And I'm going to show I, you guys. This I thing learned that from Ben. Kinda... All plushies go in poly bag. Yeah. You, kinda, <laughs> you guys kind of giggled when I said, but here he is. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> a plushy wiener. And he's like, he was pretty big. He's like 10 or 12 inches tall. Like, but yeah. Congratulations. All right. Let's move on to the comment of the week. And our boy Chris has got that one for you. All right. I got it right here. All right. This is a comment from Flippy McFlipperson. I really enjoyed this episode of Toaster Talk with Shane. Looking forward to next week. Smiley face. <laughs> toaster Talk. <laughs> toaster Talk. That was a sweet toaster, though. I got to say. Was. I did see that I, comment I, today. I love, I love Evan. Chris, I don't know if you know, he's local here to me, so we, you know, we get up together every now and then, but he he is a, a cool dude. I'm glad to see he's uh, supporting the channel here. That's awesome. Yeah, Thanks, uh, actually, the, uh, Flipping with Clipperson, that's one of the first channels that I was really getting into um, and learning about how much golf clubs sell for and all that stuff. So, yeah, I've, same been, watching here. Him. I've been watching him for years. Yeah, well, same, same, same here. Junior. He was the first channel I subscribed to. He wasn't the first channel I found, but he was the first one I subscribed to. And it was, it took a while before I realized he was local to me. Um, but That's yeah, cool. cool, super cool dude. Okay, gentlemen, we're going to go to the next segment, the YouTube video of the week. Now, I want to tell you this is about a seven to eight minute video, but I think he makes some interesting points in it that I think would ring true to what we're doing. So oh, I'm going to put that seven, up. eight minutes. Uh, this, this segment is copyrighted by the reseller locker room podcast. Just throwing that out there. That's exactly right. Let me get it going here, fellas. This is a guy resale dojo on YouTube. Dojo. <laughs> All right, guys, I got something to get off my What's that? Um, Karate noises. It's been sitting there for a while, and I just really want to talk about it because uh, since I've been gone, where is he? I, at? I, since I don't want to say gone. like I'm not an expert. I do well with my business. I do really well. Like be able to support my family full time, bring my wife home from working full time, working. I don't have to work corporate anymore. Um, being able to spend a lot more time with uh, Dude, my son bragging. and my wife. Um, <laughs> this is just so this is, uh, successful. Um, but if you listen to some of the gurus out there, they would say my business isn't successful. Um, Stop because listening to me. I'm an everything seller, I guess. Um, I don't stick to one category. I don't niche down. <clears throat> fully to one single thing i don't niche down just to socks i have to niche down all the way down to purple socks that are four inches long is some of these <laughs> that's where the money is in the purple socks say. yeah four inch um, purple socks is where it's what at. i want to tell you guys you are successful if you're running your business how you want to run your business um Agree. whether you're selling ebay amazon mercari poshmark whatnot locally I know people Back that page. sell at flea markets and do fantastic. Like people have done eBay full time. They just jumped into to flea markets and they are making a buttload of money just selling stuff at flea markets here locally. Uh, they sell to Chris. Storage units. Um, I know people that sell in every single category, that source every single category. I know people that do, you name it, they sell it or do it a certain way. And guess what? What they're living their lives, they feel successful, True. so they are successful, right? What I don't like is hearing people out there, and they try to make everyone into a drone. Like they, they just like you have to be robotic and follow this certain method. And I get it; it helps, especially if you're brand new. 
it helps you to have someone give you like strict structure. You do this, you do that, and your business will uh, be perfect. But what people don't forget is some of these people that are saying all this stuff, and charging you for all this stuff, they have been uh, wrong. Rockstar flipper. They have tanked a market. Um, look at the clothing market right now. I wouldn't want to sell clothes right now, or at least have that as my primary business. You have to have like 20,000 items to make money and everyone's tanking the category because guess what? People were told to tank the category years ago. Guess Um, what? Everyone wears clothes. I was getting out of this of making content. I remember seeing people talk about, yeah, you buy it for a buck and you make $5 profit on whatever garbage t-shirts. And so they were telling people to rinse and repeat and do that over and over and over. And yeah, you can make money if you grind that, but only so many people could grind that way. There really is one guy that could really grind that way. Um, Everyone else was following a bad strategy because what they should have been doing and what they eventually came around to teach everyone about is increasing your profit. Um, And as myself being an everything seller, was he referring to I make a lot of profit because that's what I think I cherry pick the best things out of a lot of categories. Uh, so I, I just didn't like it when people, you know, you, you hear people say you better listen to me, but you're wrong. A few years ago, you taught people the wrong way and everyone's saying how much they're struggling. Um, and how much, you know, how much they're having to grind just to get, you know, a few bucks out of an item. It's, it's not a good, not a good look. So I don't know. That's just been on my chest for a while. Like hearing people say that you need to do something a certain way to be successful and watching Maybe them. We should listen to this guy in two it. times speed. And uh, <laughs> again, like structure is great. And all the other information. It could I have been done three minutes ago. Fine, like, you know, for hands and stuff like that. But I, I just don't like, um, you know, if you, you say it's one way, like, it has to, it's, you don't run your business one way. Run the business how you want to run business. Like, if I was talking to a new person jumping in, I'd say, buy a little bit of everything. Figure out what you like. And if you like everything, sell everything. Because guess what? There's a lot of money out there in a lot of different things. Can you scale it to a million dollars just doing a little bit of everything? Yeah. You'd have to have workers, employees, but you would need the same thing to do it if you're in a niche down as well because you need to run volume. So mm-hmm. it's it's not it's not that um, you have to do one way. Mm-hmm. And it feels like what a lot of stuff has popped up is everyone has jumped on doing it one way. And uh, I don't think people are happy doing it that way. Like you see them, like they're saying there's a lot of people are saying they're struggling. Um, it's because they all jumped into one market and tanked a one market. Um, congratulations. Followed the wrong method. So I would say if you really want to grow your business, be successful, and feel successful. Just do whatever Coffee the hell mugs. you want. Don't listen Coffee to anyone. <laughs> Mug life. Never listen to me. I, I actually spaced out, so I wasn't. Die. But you know, I have a short attention span. I mean, I I was I was there <laughs> I, for like three minutes of it. I, I warned you that it was a it was a long one. I feel like we should do like maybe Our, five seconds. Guys, you you can come back now, viewers. Yeah. So, what do y'all think about what he said? In seriousness, what do y'all think about that? First of all, he's talking about what tech and sports, and then his partner, um, what was that guy's name? Uh, well, Chris. to be fair, we don't know who he's referring to, but well, talking about the, the premise, mission down in clothing, so it kind of like that's where my head goes, right? But, but the premise, what what do you think of the Alleg- premise? Allegedly, he was talking about them. I don't. <laughs> I don't agree with the niche down thing unless it works for you. Just, I mean, it's pretty much the gist of what he said, except he didn't say it that way. It's like, if you can niche down and that's what you like, like, I mean, like if I niche down into golf, if I, if I had enough golf clubs at my, in my reach, I wouldn't have a problem niching down to golf clubs. I, I really yeah. think, you know, I like it. Absolutely. I mean, I enjoy it, but that's not reality. 
And I think that's the reality for a lot of people for a lot of categories. It's like you have if you want to get into that, you have to kind of sell everything because you ain't going to find enough of one thing. You know, I mean, like there's that chick that been making all those videos lately that sells just jeans, you know, and uh, hey, that's awesome. But, you know, how long did it take to get to that point? I mean, shoot, man. I mean, she's killing it now. But what was she? You know, how how long did it take to get to that? You know, I don't know. But niche down seems like a long road to me unless you have it at your reach all the time. Unlimited. Supply. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. I think I'm I'm for, I'm perfectly fine with being an everything seller and I think he was as well. That dude yeah. uh Dojo, He's what'd you say? Of- Reseller Dojo? Resell Dojo. Resell Dojo, yeah. I, I think he's he's perfectly fine with being a everything seller, it sounds like. So uh, personally for me, that that's the place to be. I d- I wouldn't want to be be niche down in anything unless like you said, Chris, golf clubs, I absolutely would. There's a lot of money to be made in golf clubs and, and golf and covers. in general. Yeah. That's why I was that's what I was gonna say golf in general, you know, Travis Matthews stuff isn't okay, selling wow. as well as it was, you know, last year, but it still sells. Uh quite a bit of that stuff, you know, apparel wise still sells very well. So I would niche down into something like that, but well, and, and you know, recently. sorry, Shane, being an everything seller is good for the brain, too. I mean, it like, keeps it fresh, you know, it's new stuff. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. All the players are like, one Const- thing, one constantly thing, learning. Like he said, like, you turn into a robot, you know? I mean, yeah. That's what constantly I'm learning if you're an everything reseller. You never stop learning. Well, and, and your opportunities are endless. I mean, you're not, you know, cutting yourself off. Yep. My takeaway is, and this should be for everybody listening and watching, do what is best for you and yep. your business. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's fine to listen to other YouTube channels and, you know, we all four have our own channels. We all four do businesses differently, but our situations in life are different. Your situation is different from ours. You do what works for you. Treat, like I say on my channel, fellas, the information that I give out is what I'm doing for my business. If it works for you, treat it like a buffet. Take what you want, leave the rest. That kind of drove home the point that I've always said is make the business about you and build it to fit your success model, whatever you determine that to be. Yeah, yeah, I agree. 100% with that. I think I'm going right, to burn, burn all my books and uh, buy only purple salt. <laughs> Yeah, four inch tall purple socks, man. That's that's the market. All right. Uh-oh. We're gonna get into thanking our paid members to the reseller locker room podcast. We first want to shout out our skybox members. Chad of Wolfman Goodies is a Skybox member. We thank you, Chad. He's got a YouTube channel. Go over and check out Wolfman Goodies on YouTube for sure. And second, the Skybox member of the podcast that we shall not name is a new Skybox member. Welcome in, fellas. We've got this we stuff copyrighted, you. and we will sue. <laughs> Next MVP member, Mike Camparelli, and followed by Keith Vintage Sports Flips. He also has a YouTube channel. Go out and check our man Keith out. He has a live show that he does. He does sports memorabilia, fantastic content. Be sure to go check out all these guys, the podcast and all their channels. We appreciate all of our paid members to the locker room. And if you're not a paid member, why not sign up? We have three different choices. We got lots of benefits for you. Absolutely. And guys, I'm going to put all three of you on the spot right now. So speaking of the trash to cash fellas, I was watching their latest episode this morning and they had a viewer reach out black sheep society. I'm going to shout out black sheep society. Don't know who you are. Don't know if you have a channel, but black sheep society asked the guys, what annoys you most about your co-hosts and what do you admire most about your co-hosts? And I thought it would be fun if the four of us told everybody what we are annoyed the most by the trash to cash podcast guys and what we admire the most about the trash to cash podcast guys and oh, I'm gonna go oh, we're doing it on them oh yeah i thought, yeah, you were, I, I thought, I thought, I thought no we were going to do each other <laughs> oh no you know i'm taking shots always taking shots so i'll go first so this oh. might be less awkward for you guys when it comes here let to me you. put you full screen bro there you go no, kevin no. 
every single time in your flipper videos, you put your left hand in your pocket about 67 times. Sometimes what? just for half a second, you put it in and you take it right back out. And it absolutely drives me crazy. But one thing I admire about you, brother, is you are a true to the core Gen Xer. You take the punches coming in from Dave and Carrie, and you just <laughs> roll with it. It rolls off your shoulders. It doesn't bother you at all. You remind me a lot of myself when it comes to that. So that's Kevin. Carrie, dude, that facial hair, bro. It's uh -oh. not like it's patchy. It's not. You Shave it off, bro. Just shave it off. Save everybody the headache, the trouble, the eyesores. <laughs> uh, what, what I do admire about you, bro, is you're, you're, you're super humble. You're one of the biggest softies out there on YouTube, and you're one of the kindest people I've met in our small community, and I appreciate you for that, man. Dave, you're a lot kinder in person than I thought you were going to be, and that annoys the crap out of me, dude. Like I, me. I, I need the Dave jerk. Dave that I feel like you are when I'm watching you on Trash to Cash but in person <laughs> you're not you're like super kind super helpful like you, you've reached out to me asking if I needed help with this focus right freaking audio thing and my microphone and that's just not what I expected man so be more of a jerk in in, in public um, we'll appreciate that but what I, what I admire about you, Dave, is you are a straight shooter. You're brutally honest. You tell it like it is, and I'm the same way. So I just I appreciate that. You know, as a viewer, I appreciate you that you're brutally honest and you're straightforward, and everything's transparent. Um, but yeah, that's me, guys. Who's up next? Wow, I'm thrown off. Wow, we listen. We we've not met. I mean, it could, it could just be me. It could just be me. I know I caught you all guys off guard. Yeah, I'm like trying to write things down to really think about it here. Well, <laughs> I, our I viewpoints will be one sided because all we have seen is what we watch on YouTube. You've had the pleasure of meeting them in person. You know that's true. I'm that's not. true. That's true. But if all I've right, got so a hack, if I've got a hack, I'm gonna hack. Hack, uh, brother. I'll, hack. I'll, I'll tell you what mine is. <laughs> I like to know why Carrie is the only one that has the common decency and respect to reach out and actually have a conversation with me. Kevin, been compared to you for over a year, son. We've been compared left and right. Never heard a word from you. Dave, don't ever hear from you either. Are are they scared to talk to me or what? I mean, is, am I that intimidating? I mean, I, I want to be it's friends. I, it's hair. probably the hair. I want to be friends. And I want to have conversations. You ride Harley Davidson's and that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> but on the flip side, mm. if you like that kind of content, they do a good show. When they use our set, when they steal our segments, it makes their show even better. But I know that ours is the leader and the best in content creation. And theirs is just a sideshow, which is nothing wrong with. If you like watching a sideshow, freak show, whatever you want to call it, that's good. But here we're down to business, so that's my take, Alex. I, mean, I didn't have time to think about this. You really threw me off. I'm gonna Let's I'm, just I got, talk about how much they make you mad. I just thought it was gonna be fun. So, well, my Dave bad. keeps stealing my segments I come up with, so I'm mad about that. But <laughs> Dave did say that I'm his favorite locker room member, so I have no issues with Dave whatsoever because I'm his favorite. And it's, Dave, it's funny. Dave is my favorite out of everyone on Trash the Cash, too. So I've, I've met him, and that hasn't changed, so I didn't impress him much. <laughs> the only thing I have to say to Kevin, I'm a little upset that my wife watches Kevin at night in bed, but it's okay because she only watches it to fall asleep. So that's fine. <laughs> oh, she, she <clears throat> learned that from J-Rod. Oh, yeah. She says he, he makes her tired, so she goes to sleep. Carrie, I, uh, I have nothing. I have nothing. I don't think I have anything bad to say about Carrie. So Carrie's the genuine. Carrie's the one really person is. when I first kind of got back into reselling and the whole social media that took the time to talk to me to give me some advice. So I appreciate that that he took the time out to, you know, actually message me back on Instagram and give me some advice, social media wise. 
But yes, I really yes. have nothing. I have nothing to bad to say about any of them, honestly. No, me neither, really. But it's still fun. Yeah, we're just. Talk. I am we're a just... little. I am a little disappointed that Dave's not a jerk in person too, because that's why he's my favorite. Because I relate to him. Because we're kind of like arrogant and could care less what anyone thinks. That's how Dave comes across to me. You know, like he could give a crap what anyone thinks about him. So I respect that. All right, it's the newbie's turn. All right, so I've watched all the channels. Um, I I watch act. I actively watch the Commonwealth uh, Flipper channel. I watch that almost daily. So you know, I respect Kevin. I respect all three of those guys. Um, the the Trash to Cash podcast. It's not really my thing. I, I watched it for a little while. I left them some comments. They probably you know were trying to figure out how to respond to you know. I don't know who knows, but um, yeah, no, I haven't watched those guys in a while. Um, you know. Dave, I, I respect the fact that he was able to quit his full-time job and do what he wants to do. You know, that's pretty awesome. Um, but, you know, his, his content is – it just doesn't jive yeah. with, with what I watch. I don't know. That's it. But uh, yeah, I, I respect all three of the guys. Carrie, I, you know, I, I watched the channel like a couple times, and it just didn't fit what I like to watch. But yeah. uh, he, he's, he seems like a really intelligent guy, you know. And I, I respect all three of those guys, man. Yeah, and they're killing it. Degrees. I mean, let's not, let's not BS around. They are killing it, so. True. Yeah, true. absolutely. Like like them or not true. like them. I mean, I, here's what it is. I, didn't, I didn't mean to put anybody on the spot. I just thought it would be fun. Yeah, um, you did because you weren't going to. You said you weren't going to tell us. You're going to pop it on us. <laughs> well, they, so here we they, are, like two sheets in the wind. Just like, what the frick do we say? I mean, yeah. You know. They they did it in their show, so I thought it would be for one. I thought it'd be funny to make you guys think we were about to do it about ourselves, but then throw. We're gonna do it about them. So you succeeded in that one, because that's what yeah. I have. I listen, listen. I have to echo what you guys said. You you know, I do respect all three of the guys. You know, especially Kevin. He's kind of like been paving the way for reselling for a long time. Um, But uh, yeah, but their channels individually, they're an acquired taste. Basically, is what Chris is saying. (laughs) So, but anyway, I I, I do. I watch them all. I enjoy them all. for different reasons, all for different reasons. But seriously, sure. guys, go watch the Flipper videos. Commonwealth Flipper. Count how many times he puts his left hand in his pocket. And you brought that up on your um on your trash to cash bass show, and I was the next day I watched the show. I was like, man, why did he bring that up now? I just can't stop looking at him sticking his hand in his pocket, man. I gotta try not to look at that. I'm I've never, I've never noticed that. That's fine. That reminds me when you watch the podcast of theirs. It annoys me when Dave sits back in his chair and throws his arm over his head like this all the time. You ever have you noticed that? He kind of just does this, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Man, I've, like, I've noticed it, but it doesn't bother me. <laughs> I'm gonna I don't start know, dude. No, guys, we hey. we for real <laughs> trash to cash. We appreciate you guys joining the Skybox yep. tier membership. Uh, thank you all so very much. You didn't have to do sure. that. And Dave reached out to me. Um, and said, hey, what's going on? I, I'm trying to join. Can't join. So we got Ben on it. Ben fixed it. And yeah, he did again. Bring that we we just appreciate you guys. You you not only did you join, but you brought it to our attention that the memberships were down. So thank you. I feel but like I the other guys, if they listen to this, are gonna find out that they're members now. It's probably just Dave spending their money. Well, That's Dave, Dave, Dave told him, Dave, <laughs> Dave mentioned it on their show today. So, okay, cool. I, I haven't finished it yet. So, I haven't got to that. Yeah. We do appreciate you fellas over on Trash to Cash very much. And thank you for joining the channel. I had sale number three just now, guys, since we've nice. been recording. Three since we've been recording? Yes, sir. I just finished sale zero. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does anybody have I a tip our- of the week? Uh, yeah, Shane, you got one? I'm thinking. I don't think I do. Sounds like maybe Christmas. Check, check your seller level. Uh, I just did a video on it uh, that dropped today, actually. But, yeah, check yeah, your seller level, man. If, you, if you're not checking that, you know, eBay could be throwing some late shipments on there without you knowing about it, man, and it could kill your seller level. So just a, just a tip. Go to the seller hub, scroll to the bottom, and look at that, man. Look at your percentages. Yeah, and I imagine it doesn't take it. very much to drop – to you know Ooh, you saw standard. those numbers all showing that's crazy like 0. 0.30 percent you lose your level you know it's like what yeah. yeah yeah that's a great tip man for real and go watch the video oh yeah go watch the video. channel it's well a good video. my tip my tip of the week is something that i've seen on rally roots and i've seen it on a couple of other videos now 
you need to go through and check all your listings because Rally Roots had an enormous amount of shoes that they had listed, but as they went in and started looking at their listings, they are gone. And I've I heard, of, yeah, it. I've heard people talking about that. Yeah, I, an eBay glitch, maybe they're getting lost and they're just disappearing. But this is a real deal. Oh, I know who it was. Frizzy's finds um, also echoed after they watch Rally Roots video. They checked their inventory. They also found items that they had listed but are no longer listed. So let us know down below if you start looking at that, if you found that you're missing some listings. It's a good idea to always keep an eyeball on the number listed at all, at all times. I, I mean, I do anyway, but I know that others are experiencing the same issues. So it could be site-wide or it could be in sections. I don't know. Rally Roots. I don't watch Rally Roots. They're a little too pretty for me. I only watch ugly resellers. Then why haven't you watched my new video, Shane? I'm pretty ugly. <laughs> I, I did. I did. Now the first you got a tip. one I watched. I don't got a tip. I got nothing for you. All right. Gentlemen, y'all have anything else? Let me rant. No, shout, quick. shout out Alex's bookshelves, though. Oh, yeah. I, I got a whole new inventory system, so I flipped my books around so you could actually see them. It's like way more colorful now. So I like yeah, Why don't you tell us what your system was? And what you changed it to for it other was, book resellers. So I had a, just a number of systems. So one through, we were up to like 350 books. So say book 250 sold, I'd go find it in my SKU, 250, pull the number, put it in a bag, then relist and use the previous number. So I'd relist another book at 250. But now I started listing a whole bunch of new books and I sold a ton of them. And books aren't all the same size, so I'd find that there's not enough room where that number needs to go in between. So I would have to oh, move one book to fit one book, and then me, me moving one book, I had to move three shelves and all, move them them. all up, <laughs> and it was taking forever. So I said, heck with this system. It worked for uh, quite a while, but it doesn't work now. So now I, it's just like this is rack B, and then B1, B2, B3, and 4. So A, B, nice. C. So... It so might you have everything cataloged, or you're just doing that moving forward, or what? Uh, moving forward, I still have the numbers in here. I didn't right, change right. it, but anything I listed down here and all this shelf is all newly listed stuff. Nice. So it's just going to be on rack C. It might take a little bit longer to pull the item because I'm not, I'll have to actually look at the titles, which is not too bad because you can see the spine. Because I used to lay them down this way so the ticket would be hanging out of them. That's my new system. But at least you know what shelf letter to go to, and then you just scan across it to find the title. Yeah, because it was ridiculous moving all the books around. Gotcha. Yes. What if, what if, hear me out, one less book per shelf. Boom. Never have to change a thing. No. <laughs> what if? <laughs> Good try. <laughs> I'm just saying one. You could you get a, a really big book, like the, you know the Bible. Take I the biggest today. book from each shelf. Yeah, put it at the end of your the end of everything. You have the one through three fifty or whatever it is. If there's you know a three inch book, take that one off the shelf, move it down. You never have to change your skew system. But no, if that works for you, man, that's great. I just started this week, so let we'll us see know. how it works. Out. Right. Posted, yeah, Chris. Chris, yes. Shout out your YouTube channel and all your social media right now before we go. All right, I'm at Easy Pickings on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, with the Z. Easy with the Z. I know people say not to change the letters, but hey, that's why I like it, you know. And then uh, my eBay, uh, my eBay store is Forgotten Collectibles. So there's a link to my eBay store for my YouTube channel. I got everything linked each way. So, well, I don't link from eBay to YouTube, but everything else is linked. All right. Awesome. Alex, do Chris, the same. Yeah, do the same. Do it. What am I doing? Oh, uh, yeah, if yeah. you want to buy, hey, I'm doing it. If you want to buy a book, go to Cray Collector on eBay. Um, and Beard King Picker on Instagram, also on YouTube. And if you're into books, go check out my other Instagram. It's a Book Dust Media, where I post all my books there. You can buy them directly. I'll make more money off shipping. Shano. Hey, guys. My name's Shane. No, seriously, I'm Soda City Flips absolutely everywhere on social media. 
Um, Coach Soda City flips everywhere too, my reseller Genie. Oh, as of recent, Giaro Pack. That's right. And I have partnered. Uh, I guess it's a partnership. Anyway, they're sending me stuff. I, I've been buying from them for a while, but they're sending me stuff. I have a code now. Soda City flips. Save yourself whatever the percentage is. I'm horrible at this, and I've forgotten. Uh, <laughs> anyways, yeah, Soda City flips everywhere. YouTube, eBay, Facebook. Uh, Instagram, TikTok, I'm everywhere at Soda City Flips. Cool. Rocky Top Picker on YouTube, both Shane and I both have memberships to our individual channels as well as here in the locker room. Gentlemen, what a great show. Chris, let's give our new member a round of applause. Welcome in. Okay. I see you got a Kansas it's City it's flag. In, man. Is that because you're a huge Taylor Swift fan? Yes, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. My name's Ben, the Rocky Top Picker. On behalf of Chris Easy Pickens, Shane Soda City Flips, Alex and the Beard King Picker, all of us in house, we cannot wait to see you next time, Thursday, 9 a.m., or maybe a little bit after, depending on how the video upload goes. Sorry if it was late. Try not Live to happen show. again. Live, Live show. show. Live show. Next Friday night. No recorded one, but see you next Friday here on the resellers locker room.